who gets their first tattoo in their 40s of the Arch Linux icon. So, I have zero interest in being the distro guy. And in fact, my channel isn't primarily about Linux at all. In fact, my channel is going to be more about software development, DevOps, that sort of thing, right? But recently I made a huge change. I left Arch Linux. And I basically just want to tell you why. I loved Arch Linux. I used Arch Linux for over a decade. Somewhere along the line, they took the wrong route. I mean, for real, they just, they went the wrong way. And they went the wrong way in a lot of ways. Uh, one way I would say that they went wrong is things should have just kind of stayed the same when it was working, right? So I remember when you used to be able to type Wi-Fi menu in, um, in the prompt, you know, to connect to the internet. I remember this. Now, I don't need Wi-Fi to, to connect to the internet most of the time, so that's not really an issue for me. And that's not why I quit using Arch Linux. But I remember it, and it was one of those times where when I built that, it seemed like it was bulletproof at the time. I left Ubuntu because I would install like three desktop environments or something in, you know, or something would happen and my grub menu would disappear. And then I would have to like, you know, get into my grub menu and reinstall grub and, and that sort of thing. And that, that just got annoying to me. So when I discovered Arch Linux, I actually made this video. A couple of videos on a different channel on how to install Arch Linux because I kind of like felt like I'd found a home right one of my original builds of Arch Linux literally lasted me five years and three computers right when I went to uh, you know when I bought when I got my fourth computer I decided to make a fresh install of Arch Linux because I was just like, well, I've had this for like five years and it's like bulletproof. And I, I didn't see the need to uh, reinstall. I, I didn't see the need to, um, you know, try and see if I could, you know, get it to last longer, right? It still might might have been up to this point, but I doubt it. And I'm going to tell you why. About two years ago, I started noticing a bunch of changes in the Arch Linux set up and everything else and it, it kind of got me to draw a blank because I, I didn't know what to think about it and honestly you know some of the changes that they've made in the past were total winners right you know like when in 2012 when they switched over to system d that was probably the right choice i think most people would agree with me you know there's a few luke smiths out there who sit there and go you should be using Arnix linux because it doesn't have this bloat in system d on it you know whatever so i thought initially that some of these changes were were good right i thought they were positive i thought that you know they were for the better only now i i realize they probably weren't and what I started noticing about two years ago was changes in the package management specifically. And so I'll give you an example. When I would update, I wouldn't be able to update. So like before I would update like, you know, about once every two weeks or once a month, then I was good. Well, now... Every time I would update once every two weeks or a month, my system would, I would have to uninstall half the programs on my system and then uh, get the update to go through and then reinstall everything. It's not really a big deal, but it was annoying to me. And so I said, you know what, there has to be a better way. And then I started, you know, listening to Derek Taylor of DistroTube, somebody who I've followed th throughout uh, since he began his YouTube channel. And he started, you know, kind of mouthing a lot of the same thing. 
like, hey, wait a minute, what, what's going on with this? And his solution was to use a bunch of snap packs and flat packs and app images. And then he said, basically, that he uses snap packs because then they show up in his D menu uh, thing. Okay, uh, I got that. So then, about a week ago, week two weeks ago, I think it was, I went to install Arch Linux again because I was getting tired of all this shit. I really was. I was really just getting fed up with having to, you know, uh, reinstall everything, do all of these things. I was just getting fed up. I, I didn't know, like, I, I had no idea why I should have to be reinstalling everything. This was not how it used to be. And then I... I tried installing it and legacy grub no longer works. They no longer really have any real support for it. Now, okay, I, I know some nerd is going to get out there and say, well, actually, yeah, whatever. Okay, it's not working. I tried to install it several times when I installed UEFI and installed on the first time. Okay. I didn't want UEFI. I wanted legacy. That's what I wanted. I have my reasons for that. I couldn't install it. And I just said, you know what? I'm done. If I'm going to have to install leg, or UEFI anyway, if I'm going to have to use snap packs anyway for everything, if I'm going to have to do all of these things, why am I using Arch Linux? Like before, there was decent package management to justify it. You know, the, the there was a difference in the actual, um, like the grub configuration to where like if there was like a hard reset or something that I wouldn't lose the grub menu. There was things like this that made sense for me to stick with Arch Linux. And in fact, it was like a match made in heaven for me. That That is long gone. Because I have to uninstall half my packages just to get a update to go through. I can't do what I want with my own operating system like I used to be able to. It no longer feels like it's bulletproof. So I left. It's just that simple. I left. For that same reason. No longer felt bulletproof. I didn't see a reason to stick around. So, what did I swap to? Well, I went with Debian. So... I didn't go with straight Debian. I actually went to, uh, I checked out a couple of distros. At first I checked out Q4OS. For those of you who never heard of Q4OS, they have this, they have um, a way to set up um, their operating system alongside Windows. It's very akin to what Wooby was to Ubuntu back in the day. I don't know how many of you remember Wooby, but I remember it because that was one of the first times where I I saw Linux as a viable replacement to Windows. And there was a lot of things that I liked about Q4OS. I, I think the kernel is just a little, like, too old. And the other thing that I didn't like I just have to say, I think they just have to fine-tune a few things in their configuration to just make things a little bit more fluid. But I think it's a great project. I really do. I would uh, would like to check out that project. In fact, I think I'm going to install that on a different computer that I have because I do actually really like that project. But it wasn't going to cut it from my main driver. So, I went to a different one that I used in the past before I went to Arch Linux, which was Solid XK. Yeah, 
that one was embarrassingly old the kernel like that project's dead like yeah nobody should ever use this okay and i think this is a problem with a lot of debian uh debian based distros is that they're just dead they're they're no longer viable to use so i looked a little bit more and i found neptune os like the planet neptune right yeah so i found neptune os and that was about five or six days ago that i switched and so far so good but i do have a few criticisms and one of those criticisms honestly your your derivatives they have to be up and running they have to be popular enough to actually be up and running and to justify you know having those derivatives out there i mean seriously like how are you going to compete with arco linux if most of your derivatives are up and running my second criticism might seem like a contradiction because i kind of um criticized the pacman package manager you know but it really isn't and you'll see here in a minute you'll see why i say this so my criticism is regarding apt i think apt is much better than it used to be and it's certainly better than aptitude that being said i don't think even right now as as things are with the uh, pacman uh, you know repository and all of the things that are going on with you know their package management that is negative i don't see a lot of people switching over to using apt i don't i think they're going to be doing the things that derek taylor is doing from distrotube which is installing snap packs and app images i think that's just what they're gonna do and there's a good reason for that pacman is a great package manager the only thing is is they have added a few things um, and just kind of put it out there before it was ready and i think that's a big problem of why we're having a pro such a problem with package management in arch linux i i really think that that's kind of uh the rub here i really do think you have to replace apt with something else you know fedora saw this a few years ago with yum i think it only stands to reason that Debian might think about making a new package manager. The third criticism that I have would be the wiki. Um, even though the wiki is much better than it used to be, I still can't figure out how to install Qtile on Debian. I know it's possible. I saw that Linux Dabbler did it. And I, I will admit that, you know, even though I used Debian before, I didn't really get how Debian worked when I used it and when I went over to Arch Linux I just went over and I just like did away with it I do like some of the philosophies behind Debian though like you know in order to use non-free software you have to indicate that you want to use it where in Arch Linux they don't care I, I think that that would be a, a plus you actually really do have full control over your operating system when you're using something like Debian and even Fedora for that matter or their derivatives. I could imagine somebody might ask me whether or not I would go back to Ubuntu at this point and that's a good question. Would I go back to Ubuntu? And the obvious answer would be probably not but there is one scenario where i do think ubuntu could actually get their reputation back and that is if they actually would do more in the development of system deboot so that you know, they could make possible dual boots under system deboot easier and use system deboot and just shit can grub 
if you did that, I might actually go back to about two. I, I, I would. And if Debian or anyone did that, I think I would probably go with that distro. There is one distro that's using system D boot, and I thought about switching, and that was Nixos. The only thing is there's a huge learning curve. It's almost like learning to use Slackware or something, right, or Gentoo. And I really wasn't, I don't have the time right now to, you know, get into that learning curve or else I might actually use it. And I mean, honestly, while we're having that conversation, if, if Slackware had some UEFI, you know, installation like uh, Refined or something like that, in my positive, I wouldn't go that route. Um, now that you have app images and things, and things are much easier to be installed on that distro, or, you know, Gentoo for that matter. I'm not positive. Gentoo, the only reason why I'm not using Gentoo is because I'm not a big fan of OpenRC, to be honest. That in its system, yeah, I'm not a big fan. And uh, I believe Slackware still uses SysVinit, but I, I could be wrong. I, I haven't checked uh, Slackware in probably, I don't know, five or six years, but I believe they're using SysVinit. I'm not a big fan, but I remember using that, and I probably could get along with that. Um, you know, the person who who would install like s6 on slackware there's a there's a really really awesome configuration that i would be interested in and have like uefi like something like refined or something like that now i there was a reason why i wanted legacy and that was for dual booting that was it that was but because dual booting is much easier on on legacy than it is on UEFI. That said, uh, Refind is really good with dual booting in UEFI, that configuration. So I'm not totally against that idea either. So there's a lot of ideas of what I want in my main driver in on the long run. And I'm not sure Debian is going to cut it. And I don't think Fedora would be much better. But for right now, it seems to be doing really well. And the thing is, is I am learning a lot more than I thought I would. And um, a lot of the problems that I had in the past are no longer problems for me. Uh, my grub menu isn't you know, disappearing on a hard reset or something like that. That's the first thing I actually try when I, uh, when I boot up a, uh, when I install an operating system and give it a try, I do a hard reset to see if the grub menu di disappears. Because if it disappears, then I don't want nothing to do with it. You know, basically what I do is I'll install it. I'll do an update, a full update upgrade everything else and then i will do a hard reset just to see if if it still sticks around there's a couple of distros that i've never gotten to work after a hard reset open susa is one of them and uh, fedora usually works after a hard reset i don't remember it ever not working ubuntu was hit or miss like yeah, probably about 20% of the time or 30% of the time I would get the grub menu. Now, I don't usually have to do a hard reset, but every once in a while, like, my fan is my fan thing isn't working right after, you know, I wake it up again or something, and all of a sudden it freezes on me and there's nothing I can do, and so I have to do a hard reset. Uh, like I said, it's very rare. It happens very rare very rarely but it does happen sometimes like if i don't shut my computer off for like five days and that's the other thing about debian that i'm still trying to figure out is when i put it to sleep and then bring it back up like 
half of the half of the services on system D don't work anymore. And I wonder why that is because I've never had that problem with Arch Linux. There's another thing that I guess a criticism I'm still wondering. So now every night I have to shut my computer down. And I don't know if I really like that. That's the most likely is that I'm missing a configuration of some sort. You know, um, and I haven't really looked into it. Um, I'd have to think about, you know, like what it could be and stuff. But for the most part, I can't put it to sleep and wake it up and have all of the services working. I'll give you a good case in point. So like uh, when I put my computer to sleep, when I wake it up again, um, usually like my browser will read my VPN, like my Brave browser or Google Chrome or Firefox. It will read my VPN that I have installed. And uh, so like I'll try to watch something like YouTube TV, right? And I can't watch YouTube TV until I restart it. And that's mainly because I no longer live in the United States, so I need a VPN to be working correctly. And for whatever reason, it doesn't read it anymore. There's little things like that that just don't work when I wake it back up. And I'm wondering why that is. Are you still with me? Like, this is a boring-ass video. Like, why the hell would you still be with me? I mean, really. But if you're still with me, you no doubt... Uh, heard some things that Arch Linux could do to take over the world like for real like who gets their first tattoo in their 40s of the Arch Linux icon like who me why because I was like super dedicated and I loved Arch Linux and I loved the fact that I found a home because I didn't have to fuss with anything now I have to fuss with everything and so I'm done with that I'm no longer interested unless you kind of go back in time but i think that arch linux just got too big for their britches the same thing happened to ubuntu you know it was like one of those matches made in heaven that was just destined to just kind of peter out but you know this is where debian could really step it up i really do believe that and so We'll see what happens. We'll see how Debian responds to this. We'll see how how Arch Linux responds to the you know, not my criticism, but how they respond to just some of uh, the things that have been happening as of late. You no doubt have some ideas on what I think would make a good distro, what uh, what you know some you know some directions one could go if they were just a little curious maybe you might check out nixos or maybe check out slackware or centos i know centos is kind of like along the wayside but you know something like that you know maybe you might check out i don't know gentoo or crux linux or something like that you know there are a lot of avenues that we could try and go towards to make a really good uh, Linux distro and you know somebody who wanted to make take that time I don't necessarily have the time because I'm a, a you know a software developer and so I don't always have the time to you know dedicate a whole lot of extra time to something like that believe me the day comes where when I can you know put in you know uh, a few hundred hours or a thousand hours into something like that i might do it um there are some ideas that i would certainly have you know being a linux user for you know almost 15 years now and that is my video for today so i hope everybody is doing well and um like i said i'm really not trying to make one of those videos and become that Linux distro guy. I think pretty much any Linux distro not named uh, OpenSUSE is probably going to work for most people. And it will definitely be a step up from something like Windows.